Are you tired of handing over a big chunk of your money to the IRS every year? If so, you're in luck because today we're talking with Shauna, the tax goddess, and she's here to share how you can legally pay way less than taxes. Shauna went from studying astrophysics to becoming a tax strategy expert. She is here to share her story, her mission, and how she shows up in the world because she knows that when she shows up, she can help entrepreneurs and business owners take advantage of the tax code and keep more of what they make. So if you're ready to learn the secrets to paying less taxes and to how to change how you show up in your business and why you should be doing so, this is an eye-opening conversation that you are going to want to miss. So keep listening because it's pretty incredible. Hello, friend. I'm Kendra, and you've tuned in to the Invisible to Invincible podcast where passionately driven business owners share their journeys from hidden gems to industry leaders. Together, we'll uncover the secrets, mental shifts, and visibility and marketing strategies that turn these hidden gems into undeniable forces. So hit that subscribe button and let's dive in. Hi, Shauna. Welcome. Thank you for being here today. Oh, thanks uh, so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you. Absolutely. I have to say, just from the little conversation we had before I hit record, I've never associated someone who's an accountant and tax goddess with the amount of energy and enthusiasm that you have. So already I'm like, oh, I can't wait to have this conversation. (laughs) (laughs) You are too sweet. Well, the term tax goddess does come along with some personality traits as well. I would think it would have to, because just even setting yourself up as the tax goddess (laughs) comes with pretty lofty expectations. This is true. The benefits of having a whole bunch of initials behind my name, right? I think I can meet most of the expectations. So I like, I have so many questions that are like log jamming in my brain. I even have a list of questions on the side that's like backup just in case. And you know what? I'm not like, I'm setting those aside. We're going to free spirit this one. How does one become the tax goddess? Can you tell us a little bit about how you became the tax goddess? Yes. So way back when I was actually supposed to start in astrophysics. So oh. not, e- not even close to tax. My brain works on numbers. Right. So yeah. Very long story short, this was in college. I come home for the summer. I'm sitting across the breakfast table from my mom and my mom is my goddess, right? So if she's upset, I'm upset. She's German very stoic. We're sitting across the breakfast table and she's open in mail and she's opens this, this envelope and <sighs> puts it down on the table, pushes back from the table. I'm like, are you okay? Hey, what's going on? No, I got a notice from the IRS. As a small business owner, you know, I've spoken to the CPA, I've spoken to the tax attorney. No matter what I do, there's always more taxes to pay. How am I supposed to run a business? At the time I was studying astrophysics. I wasn't anywhere near tax. And I said, well, you know, I'm smart. I mean, okay, you've got smart people on the team, but maybe I can find something. Let me at least try. So I started taking tax classes, fell in love with it because it's all about having a set of rules, which my little astrophysicist brain really enjoyed. Like we have a set of rules, but how do you play chess within this set of rules? Like with the pieces you have, so married, single businesses, whatever it is you have, how do you play chess to get to the outcome you want? And for most people, they want to only pay the bare legal minimum of whatever the taxes are that they are required to pay by law. Same with my mom. So started studying, started researching. Now it took a few years, right? But long story short, switched over to accounting and finance, got my master's degree in tax, became a CPA. And at this point now, uh, if you look at the statistics, there are 660,000 CPAs, according to Google. There are only 15 of us that are what are called certified tax strategists. So we're in the top 1% in the country for specifically tax strategy. It all stemmed from a desire to help my mama, which made her happy, me happy. And now she follows what we call the 6% life. That is our average tax rate for our clients. So, Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. (laughs) I have so many questions. My very first (laughs) response to that was, I once took a, a screenplay writing class And at first I fought it because there's so many rules and frameworks, but after I did it, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And in my head, I'm like, 
why didn't I look at tax classes versus ah, I've you done know, nothing with my screenwriting class, let's be clear. What I honestly believe is that people follow paths because something in their life happened. Some, and in my case, it was my mama. My mama's upset. I'm going to fix it. So I fixed it. Mm -hmm. And along the way, I know all these other people and clients. Basically, the entire U.S. group of citizenship here that wants to pay right. the tax they are required to pay and not more than that. I just think it's amazing. And as someone who struggled through my accounting class when I was getting my MBA, my level of appreciation for people who enjoy it, love it, <laughs> who are excited about accounting is unfold. I think that's one of the places where people, especially now in today's day and age, right? I can look up the strategy on AI. I can learn about the strategy on YouTube or on TikTok. I love the fact that we have so much information, but more information does not help you when it comes to the technical step-by-step, -step, if you don't check the right box, details of doing the actual thing. So I love the fact that the world can go out there and find the info, but make sure you're working with somebody who knows what they're doing. You no. go to file a tax return on TurboTax, it kind of asks you questions, but if you answer the question the wrong way, it will take you down a wrong path and you don't know you did anything wrong. And that, just, I mean, we see case after case, it breaks my heart when I see stuff like that. And to your point, AI, TikTok, Instagram, love all the access to information. How many times have you watched those videos and been like, that's not right? Ah, 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 a million. A Who million. can you trust? Just because well, the information's I there. I was right, but I mean, this is on TikTok, yeah. but like, you got to find somebody that knows what they're talking about, right? Like, right. do your research, right? Make sure that if, if you're looking at tax strategy, you're working with not just a CPA, because if there's 660,000 and there's only really 607 that even do tax strategy as a specialty, like, mm -hmm. you got to find one of the 607. Yeah. So, my question for you is when we think of accountants typically okay. and tax professionals, <laughs> okay. They're more introverted traditionally. Traditionally, fair. 100%. Traditionally, yes. the stereotypes there, right? Yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. And it's there for a reason. In many cases, yes. You do not seem to be very introverted. Nope. How do the two work together? How do you? Uh, how do you? I have a couple of questions around this, and love the it. first is, how do you? go through and do work in an environment and in an industry that is traditionally very introverted heads down cal literally calculating in their heads all the 100%. time yeah how uh, how did you stand out <laughs> yeah so i always blame it on the red hair when i first started my career right i'm now in tax and finance i'm specifically in tax i went to what is now the big four and right. kpmg you're 100 correct 70% of the time face down, 20% of the time in meetings about the stuff that you're face down on. And 10% of the time is like, hi, my name is Shana. I didn't last very long. Just, just okay. to be really honest with you, I just yeah. didn't. I did what I call a Goldilocks. So really big firm, medium-sized firm, small firm. As you go from the really big to the small, you get a lot more client interaction. And that was definitely personality wise. That's more my forte. I yeah. am very good at taking complex tax topics and explaining them in what we call human English. So it's not mm -hmm. tax code, not explaining above your head, you know, these kinds of things. And so certainly, you know, my, my business tax goddess, we have, I think it's a little over 105 people on staff and you're going to meet the introverted CPAs. We need those people, right? They love sitting in the room, doing their stuff, working on the details. But I do think you need a balance to run a business. Right. So I, I guess luck. I, I don't know where it came from. My mom tells me that my dad passed when I was five, but she said he, he was one of the best salespeople she'd ever met. So I think I got some genetics in there too. More than just the red hair. <laughs> exactly. Um, so you're in this more introverted type industry, yeah. clearly standing out. What made you decide to start your own to become the tax goddess. How does one become, you mentioned you all the degrees and all the letters after your name. How do you decide to, did you name yourself the tax goddess? Did someone else call you that? Was it something you stumbled on? Completely. Let's go with by accident. So oh, um, yeah, when I first started my business, I knew that I wanted to go out on my own. I've, I've got that entrepreneurial spirit. I like talking to people. I'm technical. I can do all these things. Let's go try it. So I'm in Arizona. When I first went to start my business, I went to the Arizona Corporation Commission and I walked into the front door and there was a lady behind the counter and I'm like, I want to start a business. Help me start a business. 
And she's like, okay, great. What's the name? I'm like, I didn't get that far. What do you think the name should be? And so this woman, so kind, and I wish I knew her name because she was amazing. She spent like 30 minutes with me and we were playing with names. And she's like, okay, well, we're not really finding anything amazing. Let's call you SWC, Shauna Weckerlein, my last name, Consulting Business Enterprises. And I'm like, okay, that's a place to start. Not super sexy, but I had a business name. Yeah, check the box. So we go about three years with that name and it was fine, gaining clients, everything's great. I'm at a networking event. Now, because I am the opposite of the introvert, right? I am chit-chatting away with this person sitting next to me. They're passing around a microphone. I was not paying attention to where the microphone was. Mm. I'm chit-chatting, microphone tap on the shoulder, microphone show up in my face. I stand up in front of a room of like 300 people Hi, I'm Shauna, the tax goddess. And every head, every head in the room spun to luck. And a very good friend of mine who was a marketing guru sitting way on the other side, he said, you changed the name, the company name, your yep. license plate on your car. Thing. <laughs> now I have goddess and goddess too, right? The two cars, but everything, you name absolutely everything tax goddess. And it has been one of the best moves to mm -hmm. live into the personality and the hair and the knowledge and the ability to explain. And it's so memorable and easy for people. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I've had people tell me it's not so scary when I'm talking to a goddess, like taxes are scary for people. Yeah. And so we've had people tell me, I feel like I have a goddess on my side that is going to protect me if anything ever happens with taxes. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. You do. That's amazing. That's a really good story. Thank you. <laughs> if I was in a room with random people and someone tapped me on my shoulder with a microphone and was like, introduce yourself. Yeah. I would not be coming up with new names for myself. <laughs> I'd be lucky. I'd be lucky I could get my own name out, but I might actually make up something that I do. That's what I'm saying, right? Like there was, there was something serendipitous and the universe just said, here's your Here name. You go. Take it, go. right? And run with it. And so there you go. This year's our 20th anniversary. And that name is definitely stuck. It's one of those things also where in that moment, you could have been like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I said that. And just moved on with your day. Yeah. And got just way. let that gift that you gave yourself just pass you by. Yep. Got to keep your eyes open and your heart and your mind open to the world that's around you. Absolutely. So one of the things that really struck me when I was listening to you on other podcasts and checking out some of your videos, one of the things that really struck me is your ability to reef taxes, the weight of taxes and what that costs sometimes can be so heavy. Yeah. I think it's that way for a lot of people. My parents had their own business and we're in California and the taxes are different here. I grew up listening to my parents complain about taxes. As someone who wanted to help them, I took the marketing side. How do we help you connect with your customers and bring more customers in? Yeah. I ignored the side about the other money going out. That's Everybody's nice. got a skill set. That's right. fine. Yeah. It'd be weird if we all had the same thing. But it's just so interesting that like that reframe you help create for people. How do you do that? Where's the magic piece in there? I, I think the biggest thing, and I'm going to come from your specific story. Everybody has been trained death and taxes. The two right. things you will never 100%. get away from, right? And, and it's built into our psyches as American citizens, like death and taxes. For a lot of people, they accept it. I live in California. The highest current tax rate in California is 63%. Massive amounts of money. And a lot of people just, okay, that's the price I pay to live in paradise, right? When we try our best to get the word out there, you don't have to do that. You don't have to accept that. There are strategies. There are ways. I When, when I said the 6% life, I literally last year published a book called The 6% Life, you know, getting the knowledge out there. But people only know that something like this exists if they hear about it, right? right. And so I think it's part of the reason why I love talking to people is just one, get the word out there. Two, you have to get people to understand that this is not illegal. We're not going to jail. This is all above. A lot of people don't realize that the tax code is written for business owners. Mm -hmm. But just to be very blunt, you don't have to own subway franchises to be a business owner. You could drive for Uber. You could drive for Lyft. You could do, be doing piano lessons out of your house. If, if you have a business where somebody is paying you for something, that is the gateway drug right? Like that is how you get into tax haven. Because once you have a business, you can now start writing off your kids' 
your piano, your dogs, your phone, your office, you name it, you can write it off. And getting people to the point at which they are so tired of how much they're paying is often some sort of external trigger. Mm -hmm. They went to their CPA's office expecting to get a refund. And instead the CPA says, you owe $10,000. Stab to the heart, right? That's when people start looking if they didn't hear it through some other sort of education, a, a podcast, a YouTube, a TikTok, something else. So that's interesting because one of the things that I've been talking uh, to people a lot lately is they're really good at what they do, but they're not good about talking about what they do yep. and sharing that information. Share back. the love. We got to share the love. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. And the fact that that's something that you really incorporate into what you do to help get this word out, I think is really powerful because a lot of times we're spending so much time working on our clients and getting stuck in overwhelm and like, oh my God, I've got to make another video or whatever it is. Yeah. They get stuck and they don't know where it is. But the fact that what you have can help and make a difference in so many people is huge. And if you were trying to, if you weren't sharing that and you were just keeping it to yourself. Well, and, and I look at this, especially with what I do, there are people, there's other people, there's 607 of us total. There's 15 that are in this top, top ranked, whatever, right? There are other people just like me. Many of them, almost 70% have been hired by big public companies. Mm -hmm. The general public would never know we exist. We're like little ghosts running around in the background because we've all been hired or working for, for somebody else. Why would they share that information? So you're now down to, I don't know, a hundred people that you can even get this information from. Yeah. I think one of the best ways to find information, it, it, good or bad at this point, is TikTok. And I, it's about people recognizing that they have a problem in the first place. Mm -hmm. Because if you live in California and you're paying 63% and you're good with it, You'll never go look. You'll never hear this podcast. You'll never see YouTube. Like you'll just never go look because it's not yeah. a problem for you. Yeah. So it, it to me, it comes down to when does something become painful enough that you are looking for an option? So. It's absolutely true. And that's the case with everything. When you start to look at the different areas, I think taxes would be something really painful. <laughs> if we go back to the very first premise, it has been yeah. built in from when you were a little, you said, listening around the table, yeah. the only reason it triggered for me is because my mom was upset about it. And when she's yeah. upset, I'm upset. If your parents were like, okay, I'm grumbling, but it is what it is. Yeah. Then and that's you what have they it were. in your mind. It's about using the legal rules to get around to get you what you want. So how would someone who's listening or watching the video learn. It almost sounds too good to be true. Mm. Too good to be true with a wave of the wand, which makes it true. Strategies are very dependent on the person. For example, I'm single, but I have five dogs. Okay. I can write off my dogs as security. My dogs are German Shepherds and Kane Corsos. They're mm. huge, right? They're yeah. big dogs. But if somebody went to TikTok YouTube and said, oh, I can write off my dog and they tried to write off a Chihuahua, I know they believe they're big dogs, but they are not big dogs. And there's right. certain tax codes that you have to apply. So how does somebody learn? The second thing here for me, and, and this is actually from the IRS, is when you're looking for business deductions, when you're looking for something to write off, is whatever it is you're trying to write off, is it ordinary, necessary, and reasonable for you to do your business? That is like the key. Okay. And that's what the IRS considers as the key. So what we tell our clients to do is look at where you're spending money, right? Mm -hmm. Are you buying a Starbucks every morning? Can you meet a client at the Starbucks? Now it's become deductible. Yeah. Okay. We had a client who used homing pigeons because he didn't trust the internet. The IRS tried to attack us on that one. Ordinary, necessary, reasonable for him because he didn't trust the internet. So it, it's very specific to you, to what you do to how much you're spending. The big one, we always hear this from the guys, you know, the women are always hair, makeup, nails, clothes, right? Like how do we write these things off? The guys are always asking about the Rolex. How do I write off the Rolex, right? Oh. You can, but it's gotta be ordinary, necessary, and reasonable. For example, if you love collecting Rolexes, okay? You have 15 Rolexes, okay? Start a business on eBay, buying and selling Rolexes. 
Now you get to wear the Rolex and this is showing off your inventory. So there's always a way to do it. You just have to figure out what is the goal and what you're trying to write off and then figure out how to do it legally. So. so if I use my dog, who's cute and fluffy and small as a model could, <laughs> or my services. Service <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and you, see, you see this a ton. People on their Facebook have their mascot as their dog or, or whatever it is. Yes, potentially. Now you're going to have to get some fair market value quotes on how much is that dog photography worth, right? Right. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. How cute is your dog? Does your dog have the Instagram profile with 2 million followers or whatever? Yeah, okay, we can call that some marketing, right? You throw in little ads for what you do. Ordinary, necessary, and reasonable are always the key so that interesting. back to. So interesting. And to be able to look at that for each individual person at that level, suddenly it doesn't quite sound too good to be true, right? Like it sounds like... There's a lot of work. It's a it's, lot of yeah, detail. it is a lot of detail and it is a lot of work. And it's like anything, right? Like you have the potential outcome of what you're going to put into it. 100%. Yeah. And thank you for saying that because we do get telephone calls. Oh, you can wave the magic wand. I, I can tell you what to do and how to do it and when to do it, right? But you have to do it. <laughs> if you don't actually do what we tell you to do, I can lead the horse to water. That's about it. So she is the goddess without a magic wand, is what I just heard. Sometimes <laughs> I have a magic wand. Just, just, just not all of them. <laughs> Sometimes. It's so interesting with the, the decor on the wall behind you. I keep thinking of some of the um, temples I went into in Japan and Vietnam with some of the goddess statues with the eight arms. So Shit. useful. Eight arms. Oh my goodness. Right? <laughs> and if you're listening from those places and you don't have goddesses with eight arms from those countries, I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure I saw some in <laughs> Vietnam. <laughs> One of the things that I think is super useful for people, and it's not necessarily a tax strategy thing, but earlier we were talking about opening up your mind to what's happening around you in the world. Mm -hmm. If you can travel, if I had to give people a piece of advice, I've been to 67 countries and counting, and I absolutely 1000% believe that every experience, local or travel, brings me something, whether it's a good experience or a, oh, that was kind of not so great. Everything teaches you something. And so keeping your mind open to the possibility of the world can lead you to opportunity. It's funny you say that because the podcast episode I recorded yesterday was about the importance of and versus or. What that episode refers to is I used to believe, and I didn't really realize it until lately, that I could be healthy or I could give my business my all and have a successful business. I couldn't have both, right? Like you have to overwork and burn out and get things done to win those awards, to grow your business, whether it was corporate or not. When I realized I can't have both, it's even better, right? So when you start to look at the things you're saying, you can have travel and those experiences and bring them into your business. You can have a successful business and pay less in taxes. It's finding the places where you can change the ideas that you've always had and make them work for you. A hundred percent. Shauna, time has gone by so fast and I can't believe we're oh almost my. at 30 minutes. I want to keep talking to you. My question for you about your travel is what was your favorite country you've been to? It totally depends on why for the people it's either Thailand or Ireland for adventure. It's New Zealand. I've been there Fabulous. twice. I'm, I'm going to say East Asia generally. It's yeah. just such a culture shock. Yeah. For spectacular nature, Tunisia of all places mm. is super cool. It's hard to pick just one, unfortunately. New Zealand's my favorite, but I haven't been to 67 countries, so I have a limited view. <laughs> get like there. Give it another couple of years. You'll get there. 14 or 16 countries. And I thought That's I was really doing good. pretty that well. Was cool. that was really good. <laughs> I was standing at the ticket checking counter in Peru and the guy next to me was holding up four passports. I looked at him, like he, he kind of had a fan. He's like, I do a lot of travel. I'm like, how many countries have you been to? He said 114. You got me. Got He's me. like, I'm Jason Bourne. Jason Bourne. <laughs> and there we go. There's always somebody with more, but do what makes you happy. Is the Absolutely. Yeah. Love that. And we're going to end there. Shauna, before we go, you've written a book. You have a large company behind you. Can you tell people where to find you that people want to get a hold of you to learn more about the 6% option? 
I love it. We're pretty easy to find, taxgoddess.com. You can check out the book on Amazon. It beat out Think and Grow Rich for three weeks on the bestseller list. Talent Gnome, we have five or six different companies. Com is the place to start, so. Awesome. Fantastic. I'll put all the links below. Shauna, it's been a pleasure. I've really enjoyed our conversation. I could 100% keep talking to you for a while and I've already ditched the questions that I had. So we're just following it. the conversation where it goes. For those of you tuning in, thank you so much for being here. As always, this is the Invisible to Invincible podcast. I'm your host, Kendra Losey. And remember, it's time to make your career and business work for you. Until next time. Bye.